another episode here as we're looking at a online series called Putting Out the Fires and Online Teaching. And we are here today with um, absolutely amazing person that's really going to, I think, um, illuminate a lot of our thoughts that we know that we feel as, as educators, um, whether we're face-to-face -face, in hybrid or online. Um, if you are a science teacher, you're going to love this even more because some of this content obviously is going to speak right to your pathway. But I think even if you're not science, the, the message, the ideas, and, and the things we're going to be talking about are paramount as all of us are trying to figure out um, this, 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 this new world of education and learning and teaching and how do we create engagement? How do we create the sustainability to, to keep kids wanting to learn when, when things look different? And, and we're also struggling to figure out all the things as well. And so um, I'm super excited and honored to uh, have this guest on, on this particular uh, episode here as we start to explore wonder and intrigue and, and curiosity. So before we dive into um, all the magic and fun that, that's coming our way on, on this particular pathway of learning, Jason, Let's start off. Let's have you introduce yourself, um, who you are, what you do. Um, it's awesome. I love it. But I know um, for many people who don't know who you are, they need to add you to their radar of, of, of their PLN. So um, who are you, Jason? <laughs> hey, Aaron. Uh, well, the easiest way to explain it is I'm a scientist that happens to be a world champion magician. And uh, I spent my entire life studying applied science to be the best magician I can. And I ended up winning the world championships of magic a few years back. And I started using different fields of science to, to create new illusions. So like bending light, shaping water, forming smoke, um, rotating stages. And I built the whole stage show and had a great time doing it. But then uh, a while ago, I was asked to give a, a, a TEDx talk about seeing beyond the illusion of knowledge or why the world needs wonder and curiosity. And that's when I addressed our next cure and our next technology, our next revolutionary change will come from a question that someone asks that no one had ever thought of before. An entirely new question was formulated in someone's mind. And that's fundamentally what changes the world. It's crazy as it sounds. Uh, and so I had this total moment when I realized maybe I shouldn't be using magic to trick and I should probably use my skill set in science and magic in education. So I had a, you know, the ongoing joke is one of those hold my drink moments. And, <laughs> and I, I, I started taking over museums in, in Southern California. And we built a program called Impossible Science. And it's been uh, using illusion design to get a kid to ask a question. So forcing a kid to realize they may not know exactly what's going on. And so they're curious about how to, how to do this. And it's not about tricks anymore. It's about presenting science in a way of empowerment so that when they ask questions, they can do something. And so that's, now we have museums in LA, Downey, Orange County, San Diego, and we just did one in, in uh, Portland. So uh, it's, it's been coming a, a huge thing. And now we're moving on to online space where we're converting the experiments that you would have seen in the museum into videos that kids can do at home. And uh, it, it's, it's, been a, it's been a lot of fun and it's really exciting to see kids not only write in, but they feel that they can do things like invisibility or levitation or mind control. Uh, and they find out that it's not a trick, it's actually just science presented in a way that makes it more engaging. And it also helps to find out there's no pixie dust. It, it, it's like, it's, it's realizing they're fully capable of this stuff. They just need to learn more. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's, it's really exciting to see the impact it's having. We've seen hundreds of thousands of kids come into the museums and now we're trying to reach people that can't even be to get to Southern California. And with the world right now, this is, this is, it's needed more than it's ever needed before. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I mean, as, as, as you were talking there, I know I was, I was fortunate enough. I mean, where I came in contact with you was at uh, NCCE conference where you were a, a keynote and I was going back and, and finding my notes. Um, I try to, um, when I go to the keynotes now or conferences or learning, I try to not have my devices on me and I try to stick to everything to paper and pencil so I'm not getting distracted by all the other things and, and to the core content. And I was looking through all my pages that I was scribbling of, of notes and, and your presentation for such a context for those that haven't seen your work is um, you use magic to tell the story of, of curiosity and wonder and to get people to ask these questions that have never been asked before. Um, and 
it's 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 entertaining because who doesn't love magic but there's a very very powerful message that resonates i think with education community um of of just those things and i think a lot of people are, are grappling i mean as you're transitioning to this online of, of trying to recreate impossible science online educators are trying to figure out how to do these things online as well and their day-to-day -day practices and before we get to that online piece um you talked about your work with museums and i, I want you to 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 expand a little bit about your, your your passion for the wonder and 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 why um you believe in that so much but then also connecting that to how have you been able to make that work in museums because i think if we can start with the face-to-face -face and then we move to the online it'll help teachers think about i think about their their face-to-face -face classrooms and now we've been asked to move to this new environment because we've all been to museums we've either taken our children or grandchildren to museums maybe not yours but we've been to museums and and what is it that that creates that because you can have a space like museum, but I've also been to museums that didn't create curiosity and wonder. And I know that right. there's a lot of time and manpower into it. So that's a big right. loaded well, question, but I, I just want to no, no, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a good question. Cause I, I hear it a lot. I hear a lot of people say like, I see you go up on stage and do walk through a solid plate glass mirror, or I see you bend light with your hands. Is this something I have to do in my classroom? And I go, no, 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 no that's not, don't worry about that part. See, the, the keynote is really about even convincing people of what's called the illusion of knowledge. The illusion of knowledge is that when you uh, start to feel you know everything, you stop asking questions. I you you convince yourself that I know the answer and therefore there's no other possible solution and therefore I got this. And, and magic is really good at pointing out how to see beyond the illusion of knowledge. It's really good at pointing out there's probably something you don't know. When something is floating in front of you and none of your ideas work, uh, it's funny because you'll sign, you'll feel, you'll see people fall for the illusion of knowledge, saying, "I know the answer to this." I know the answer, and they nudge their friend <laughs> next to them. I know the answer to this, and, and, and then they have that one moment where they encounter a magician who maybe addresses the thing about a hoop being passed over a floating person or something like that. That's what we can magically call a proof. That's to nudge those people that just nudge their friend saying, you may not, your answer may not satisfy this problem. And it's really funny because what's happening is people are encountering the illusion of knowledge immediately when they see a magic trick that they may not know everything. And that's, and that's the curiosity part of a magic trick. Now, the reason I, I focus so much on wonder is because I truly feel that there's, there's a couple things that are, are really important about wonder. The first of which is the right question changes everything. And, it, and if you look at the history of knowledge, it's been true for everything. That's how we discovered flight, the light bulb, uh, the shape of earth. Um, when you think about it, it's not that flight was ever impossible. It's just no one had asked a question about how to make it possible. It, 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 the light bulb was always available. We just didn't know how to do it yet. And, and once you start realizing that our next cure and our next technology is literally waiting to be discovered by somebody who needs to ask a question, then it becomes really about inspiring a person to want to ask a question. So it's not about if people are like, well, I, I hear a lot from students and teachers, like how do I inspire curiosity and wonder? And how do I know that I could ask that question? And the reality is, you have to be inspired to know that the right question changes everything. You have to really fundamentally at your core realize that you're not teaching um, magic spells out there. You're teaching, you're teaching what we've learned so far in a game without a rule book. Like, <laughs> like that's, that's really what's happened. We were handed a giant game. Uh, it's, if you imagine a, walking up to a group of people standing around a board game and you go, hey, how do you play? And they go, we don't know, but this is what we've learned so far. You know, the, there's no difference between that and the conversation of education and science. Right. We've learned right. that if you do these, you can do this move. And if you do these, you can do that move. And then every once in a while, one move doesn't make sense. And everybody starts throwing their hands up in the air. And then they find out that there was an exception to that rule. And, uh, and once people start realizing a game without a rule book, then you realize how important curiosity is. And, and the one fundamental factor that I like inspiring kids with is, you could be wondering about a question that no one's ever asked before. It could be trapped in your mind. Yeah. And, and you have to be inspired to challenge what is popular. And, and then you take this argument about uh, being popular means right. And, and you, you expand it to what, what I was mentioning in my, my TED talk earlier was we, 
it's never worked out in the history of humankind to rank ideas by popularity. <laughs> it's just, it's just never worked out. It's just, <laughs> you think of every monumental change that's ever happened starts off with one person who's not in the majority. And, and now we've made a mistake and I hate to say it, but we've made a mistake. We've ranked our ideas, likes, oh, we ranked our ideas by likes, clicks, shares, and views on a massive scale. Right. Almost possibly may not be able to get past it again, but rather than just uh, knock on search engine stores and say, I think you're doing it wrong. Um, I had to figure out a way how to teach a kid how to see beyond a popular answer. And people are like, well, how could that be wrong? I've had a lot of debates about how could it be wrong because it works. Well, the simple solution is when does a revolutionary idea start off popular? And then, and then you find out that it falls to the bottom of a search result. And then you realize if the person that's searching the question doesn't know to look at the very bottom, or who's ever found the bottom uh, of Google <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I'm not sure it exists. I don't, I don't think it exists, actually. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, so, so you grab from an already popular idea on page one, even if it's wrong or out of date, and you now make that answer that you clicked on more popular to the next person. Even if this answer is wrong or out of date, you've now just iterated it one more time. It becomes what's in magic a, uh, a progressive illusion. It's getting stronger the more we click on it. And yet, even if it's wrong, it's now getting reinforced and flying higher than it did before. And the problem with that is we could end up bearing the next great idea in the age of information if we're not careful. Um, and people are like, well, if a person has a revolutionary idea, they'll know how to get it. It'll get out there. They, they have hope and faith that it will get out there. But that also, in my mind, says we're hoping that our next Einstein happens to have a search engine optimization plan on top of being a genius. And so that's what I'm concerned about. But so when I had this idea about like, why is, why is it so important to teach a kid how to see beyond a popular answer? Then the smartest move for me was how do you reach as many kids as possible as fast as possible? And that's when I moved towards the museums. Um, schools were great. I love working with teachers, but I, I wanted to hit thousands and thousands of kids per day. Uh, and that's that this fundamental idea about the right question changing everything and seeing beyond popular answers is where innovation comes from. Uh, that's the foundation of all impossible science. And, yeah. and, and that, and then to tackle the, uh, and that's the curiosity and wonder side of it. Why is it so, so important? Uh, and then the next phase to that was how do you go from me doing magic to you doing magic? Um, and that's when it came from, really searching through the science community for the experiments that will work no matter what because it's science and reformulating them in the form of a magic trick and, and taking the concept of a magic trick and blending them to science and now you've got a, a, a formula where a kid says I don't know how to make something levitate but I'm in the levitation class and it's science and therefore when it floats I'm doing it right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and this, this is true for invisibility, levitation, mind control, animation, transformation. The list goes through all science fiction. And, and the idea is the kid's are already ahead of you because they know the goal before they learn the science. And uh, that's true for all advanced science. When you think about, we know we want to get to Mars. How do we do it? We right. know we want to build a cure. How do we do it? We know what the cure is going to look like. We know what it's going to do before we get to it. Um, so, Fundamentally, impossible science is about reinforcing that cutting edge feeling of science. Uh, and that's what I'm really after for the kids is there's gotta be a way. Yeah, and I love that. And I, and I wanna make sure we get into, before we get into um, talking about how you've now shifted to the online, as you, I think about, you know, you, you've reached thousands of kids in museums and now you're gonna be able to reach thousands, if not millions through these online platforms. But before we get there, I, I, I was, as you were talking, I, I kept, this question kept popping in my head that I, that I, I just want to, I, I want to get your insights on is not everybody in education is a magician. We know that. Um, and, and so there's, there's obviously um, wonder that comes naturally through that. However, um, as you were talking, I wrote down, but like, I do believe educators are magicians of their own craft. Like we know how to deliver learning in ways that can connect with kids and help them get to that next step of their learning journey. As you're creating either a museum exhibit or a magic trick, or you're now creating the stuff that's online, which is so exciting. Um, 
what is your thought process to create the intrigue and wonder? I mean, I know it's one thing to, to do that, oh, but, yeah. but I think about it like with teachers too, right? Like teachers are going, I know my content and I, I know my standards. I, I know my audience, um, but I have to try to create this. And I think you being on a stage or creating a museum exhibit is no different than a teacher trying to craft a lesson in front of kids. Like you oh, have to yeah. wow the audience. And so what is your approach? Because I wonder there could be something there that could help a teacher think about their approach to engagement and, and wonder. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, you're, you're on to something really good, which is, all right, most, and I, I can't knock on any magicians out there, but most magic tricks are formulated in the form of a trick. They end up with the concept of like, uh, if you, most of the ideas of magic are formulated in the format of a trick, meaning like if you do X, Y, you fool somebody. All right. Now that that's, that's great. And it's fun for entertainment. But for when I talk about it, is magic. And when I say magic is I actually go back to my roots of what do I actually call magic? I call magic everything we don't understand. So, you know, flight was pretty amazing. Had you never seen it before and you didn't understand it. Yes. So if, as long as you really wrap your mind and your direction around what is magic magic is everything we don't understand now i use that as my first step so if i can turn something invisible and you didn't know that that was possible that's very magical to somebody it doesn't have to fool them it just has to get them to collide with that illusion of knowledge mm -hmm. they just they have to hit that moment so anything that you as an educator or a teacher realizes that the kid probably doesn't know that can be applied into this magical feeling. And, and the only thing that really separates that is to really, as an educator, process what it means to be at that age, to find out something can float if you do this. Something can turn invisible if you do this. You might think it's refraction. You might think it's static electricity because you're farther along in your process of science and magic. Um, but they're not. <laughs> and so, so you have to really digest what does it mean to be that audience member or kid and realize you can make something move on its own like animation, but it's really resonance, you know? Uh, yeah. And so there, and the only thing that's changing when they go from their moment of magic to their moment of science is that understanding that what they didn't understand was magic. And now that they've learned about resonance, it's science. And the only difference between mag magic and science is a difference in understanding. And um, I actually used that in my stage show when I was making water sit upside down inside the glass, right? We go back and forth between the, the upside down hydrostatic glass with a piece of paper across the bottom to show air pressure and show that, you know, had you never seen that before, you would say that that's magic. And then through questions, you learn that that's physics. And then when I remove the piece of paper off the bottom of the cup and the water's still sitting upside down, we're now back in magic, except I don't have any magic uh, powers. So therefore, we must be in the science world. We just haven't learned how to do that yet. Yes. And, and so, so flip-flopping back and forth uh, is my way of constantly reinforcing it to people. But if I was talking to a teacher, it's always remember. It sounds like a, mad, it sounds like a show business term. Always remember who your audience is. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, like, like it's a... Uh, it's really about remembering magic is everything we don't understand. And that line is what you want your kid to cross. You want to show them that what they don't understand first and then backpedal into the, uh, the science. So they're on this journey with you. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, otherwise people always go the other direction. They say like, here, let me, let me uh, show you a plus B plus C equals D and that's no more than a talking head and we lose engagement because you as the educator already know D is coming. Yeah. They're just, anybody who's ever said in a, in a math class, why do I need to learn this? Means we're already doing it wrong. <laughs> like, right. like, I mean, as an, as, if, a, if a kid's gotten to a question of why do I need to learn this? Then, then the educator has done it wrong. It, 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 had you started off with imagine I could, you know, make you a millionaire let's go backwards and talk about compound interest you know like like that's the idea is show them the goal show them the cure show them the innovative technology show them the next step show them the idea first and then give them the tools they would need to get there and there's no difference between that and real life of what 
STEM is tools. STEM are the tools you'll need to do the next step in what is coming. We don't yeah. even know what's coming, but we do no, know we you need those tools. Yeah, so I love it. I that, mean, that's how I do it. It's so good. And there's, I mean, you had so many good little one-liners in there that I think for a lot of us trying to just to process how to make sense of all the things. So and, and I like think you said, about this all day long. Yeah, so I feel yeah. really bad that I like, you know, like, wow, who would have thought so much thought behind a card trick? No, no, we're not no. talking about <laughs> Not talking about card tricks. Yeah, but I think it's good for just anybody listening to like, like you know, just is that constant like reframing what we know our operation and and sometimes I think for a lot of educators, not sometimes I think I think in a majority of cases is we have what we need. It's it's just reshuffling the deck. It's it's it's, it's adjusting the 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 recipe where I'm you know I'm going to insert this ingredient first before you know I've always done it this way and you have Absolutely. it. We're not asking you to start all over. Um, it's 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 the movement and the process of getting kids to come along with you or oh, kids I, or audience to come along with you to, to that end journey. I'm so happy you, you see that because, you know, I've had a lot of people in the very beginning when I started taking over museums, people started saying like, why do we need a magician in the museum? And, and, and my title is curator of impossible science. And, and the, the funny thing about it is people think magic. So they think immediately tricks. They yeah. think card tricks, sawing a woman in half. Like what's the science behind sawing a, a person in half? Um, and that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this distinction between science and magic is just a difference in understanding. And so when, when a person, we're not talking about new science, we're not talking about faux science. We're talking about uh, realizing that a kid is on this journey from science to magic. And as an educator, we have to facilitate what we already know, which seems like science to us, is, is still could be magical to them. So we have to like look inside and that sounds a little deep, but we have to realize where that person is on their journey and, and take them there. And magicians are very good at this at saying like, all right, secretly, I, well, I haven't met a magician with real superpowers yet, but if I do, I'll <laughs> keep my entire opinion. But magicians have to really process what they're doing versus what the audience is seeing. And that's exactly what an educator should be doing is thinking about what they're presenting versus what the audience is thinking at the same time. Yeah. And so if we, if we give you, uh, if we show you the path up the mountain, yeah, you could totally make that map path. And that seems to work for everybody in education now. But if I start off at the top of the mountain and I'm waving down to you, you, you know, there must be a way up there. You just haven't <laughs> found that path yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you already know that you can get up there. It's just, how do you do it? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's the same path. It's just, One's dragging the person up the hill and one's inspiring the other person to take that journey on their own. So. Right. And it's, it's funny, you know, just the other day I was, I was, I was watching one of your videos for, for your new online learning that, that you were sharing with me, you know, prior to this call. And I was, I was working with, with my youngest daughter on it. It's the one we, uh, with the marker, the expo marker on, on the pan. And then it, oh, yeah. you know, it lifts up the water to, yeah, to make the drawings come to life. And, and I was, I was just watching her. I mean, I watch it and I was, I was like, this is magic, you know, and then you get into it and, and you know, and, and you learn, I was like, so here I am like, just like, this is the coolest thing ever. But for her, just watching her eyes and watching her process, you know, and, and to me, the, the aha moment through, throughout that was when she was like, how, like, she verbally said, like, how does that work? And I knew like in that moment, like, now some of the science concepts are way beyond her brain for a nine-year-old, but however, we were able to talk about it. like she legit wanted to know like she 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 loved it she, she was it was so cool you know we're gonna we're gonna do it but at the same time she's like but i like i'm also like i want to learn this because i want to kind of figure out how to do this you know for my friends and oh, and yeah. i think it was you know going into you know segueing in, 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 into this what you're doing now you're talking about reaching kids and now you've you've started to create these online lessons for your impossible science which i you know i i was writing down prior to this call this idea of like accessibility and possibility you have found a way and you're working through this to get the kids hooked into the the the, the wow of of magic and you know in, in your terms and then building that into science and also helping teachers who maybe sit there right now listening going well, this is great, but I'm not a magician, you know, like, I mean, all you the things that I know you face. So yeah, um, you don't, you don't let's have talk to, about that a little bit here. Yeah, you don't have to be a magician on any of these. Uh, every Impossible Science episode starts off with me doing a magic trick that sounds crazy. Like uh, I'm drawing on a dry erase board and my drawing moves on its own. 
or I'm floating over fans, or I'm uh, moving things with my mind. And then I directly acknowledge that was a magic trick. That is an illusion, but that is the theme. Today, we're going to make something float. Today, we're going to make our drawings move. Today, we're going to make uh, things move with our mind. Uh, and so uh, when I, when I, once I do that, which is kind of funny because you see a lot of it in the comments where kids are like, it's an illusion. And people are like, watch the rest of the video. <laughs> I think it's really funny because like people feel like I got you. Yeah. And then other people are like, no, it's a learning video. And uh, what's really happening out of it is what I've done is now that I've hooked you with the concept or I've hooked the child with the concept, they're going to make a drawing move. And I'm not, it's not going to be some secret lever that you don't know about. They already ahead of you. They know what the, like I said, at levitation station, they would actually know that when something floats, they did it right. All right. So the theme is let's make a drawing move. Now we just show them the result of things are moving. And then uh, somewhere in the middle, I hide the dog medicine in the dog treat. Like not to compare kids to dogs, but the <laughs> right. idea is like, it's, it's digestible because it's accessible. Uh, right. and, and then the real gem that I, I would never have seen coming, it wasn't a master plan, is that being in a museum, I can't tell a person that's under six, you can't come into the museum. And I can't tell a person that's over 14, you can't come into the museum. So these experiments, even though they may be higher band, uh, higher level learning for kids anywhere from K to 12, uh, 12th grade, um, even though I've seen people say like, this is physics, I don't know why you're teaching physics to an elementary student. And I'm like, I've already seen these experiments do extremely well in a museum. Right. And so the experiments I'm bringing to the to video and people are like, well, what age range it is, uh, is it for? And I go, it, it's really about getting the kid to want to learn about science. It's not, it's not like if you're eight years old, you shouldn't watch episode six through 10. <laughs> no, it's, they're accessible to everybody. And, they're, and, it's, and it's vetted science. It's not like I'm winging it over here. I spend a lot of time trying to chew that science down to a digestible segment in the show that's like we have a little animation going on in the video that is really about showing a very visual component about what's going on in the science. So you have magic trick, you have the experiment that doesn't make sense to kids. You have a, a small cartoon about what is visually happening that you may not be able to see. And then we go back into the explanation of the science. So we've backed in from concept to the ingredients. And, and it's the same format that we've been talking about. It's like we, we back into how did you get there? And, and that's what makes it more engaging for all ages. Yeah, and that's what I love about it. I mean, I think for anyone listening, that if, if, if you're intrigued by this and maybe you still don't have the confidence or you don't view yourself as a magician, you know, Jason just said, you don't have to be a quote unquote magician to, to do these things. Um, you have started to create this content for us to um, wet our palates, get started, um, use it with our kids, um, start to create that curiosity and wonder. And, and one of the things that, that, that I see happening a lot is as more educators use these videos and the content, the things that come is so many, it's, it's, it's going to be a catalyst. I think not just for students, but I think for teachers that are going to go, Ooh, like I could do my little spin with this. And now all of a sudden you're adding your own unique flavor that makes you who you are to your students already. And it's going to take it to that next level. You know, it, it, it can be the launching point into a much deeper conversation. Um, but you've got the, 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 the incredible now resource that's accessible to all of, of, of you, Jason, really in your impossible yeah. science program to kickstart it. Because we also know bringing in the experts into the classroom is a great way to, to hook people as well. And so it's, it's it, just a, it's, it's an invaluable resource for so many educators that I think even you. now as things are online, trying to figure out how do I craft learning opportunities for kids, whether we are face to face and we're beyond, you know, the situation we're in now and things come back to quote unquote normal, whether we stay in this hybrid mode of online and in person or completely online, these, these videos work for all to kickstart exactly what we're all trying to figure out. In education, we call it engagement. I like your terms better of this idea of, of, of wonder and, you know, and, and, and inquiry, and they're all, all mean the same thing. Um, yeah. And that's it, what we're it, after. It's, it's great because, you know, to be a magician, people think they have to learn some card tricks and sleight of hand. 
what we're talking about is being a wizard. <laughs> like, like you're a wizard by association because you're a science teacher. I'm a science teacher. Even though I happen to have my magic titles, uh, I am a curator in a museum doing actual science. So yeah. you become a wizard in by association because you already know the principles that are coming. You already know what's happening. So th these, uh, as long as you understand the foundation of what I'm trying to do, there is an um, infinite amount of possibilities for you to adapt these into what you're learning about problem solving, questioning, even engineering uh, comes up in some of these. Uh, the, my goal for this is to be a resource that everybody can use. It's free, it's online, it's on YouTube, uh, on my other social media channels. I'm doing this with my sponsors because it's needed and, and it's helpful. And, and every week we come out with more, another video, another concept. And we've already committed to quite a few of them. So. You, for, for the rest of the year, they're coming out one <laughs> one after another, and uh, and uh, I think as they build up, you'll 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 start to see twenty different ways of how to make something turn invisible, twenty different ways to make something levitate, and you'll constantly get reinforced with this. There must be something I don't know, uh, and, and the kids are going to go on this journey too. Um, I did one the other day, which is mind reading through the screen with playing cards, and and the best part about it is if you don't have the playing cards. Uh, then you won't, you won't even see it take place. That's funny uh, for me. The second part to it is um, you do it to yourself on your side of the screen. So you'll fool yourself. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you actually walk through these steps and you blow your own mind. And at the end, I point out that it's mathematics. And the idea is you can now go back, write down all the steps of how to do the, like, what did I tell you to do? And you'll forever be able to do that trick to somebody. And you may not even know how it works. <laughs> or you can sit down and try to track the pieces down and try to figure out the math because there's obviously no sleight of hand because you just did it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and you can realize that math will always be the same, which is why it's considered the, the language of the universe. Yeah. And so now the kid is forced with this moment where they have to decide if they figure it out with math, they'll understand it and they'll be able to do it and they can modify it to make it their own. Or you could just choose to always see magic, write down the steps, you know it will work somehow magically through mathematics that you don't know. <laughs> and, yeah. and the difference between, I tell people at the end of the video, the choice is yours. You get to decide whether or not you want to pursue learning how this is done or forever decide you don't know how it's done, but you can do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, I, I equate it to your microwave. You know, a lot of people don't understand how the microwave's working, but they use it every day. <laughs> like, yeah, right, right. right. But, but the, that will help you just, uh, as far as an education standpoint, it's just really funny because the difference between magic and science is that difference in understanding. And you'll see that happen in every single one of my videos, but I may not say it. We're, a uh, we're uh, an educator, a uh, science teacher or whatnot, if they understand the, the principles already, they can modify it to the, their own stuff every single time. And so my goal for all these is to become a resource that a teacher has in their back pocket of like, I need to go uh, uh, learn about this subject. There's an impossible science on it. Or I just want to teach about engineering. I'm sure there's, Jason has a video about it in that concept. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be point to point. You don't have to say, "I need to learn about volume." Is there an impossible science on volume? Right. Uh, but you can say, "How does volume affect another experiment?" And I'll probably have that one. Like, a, like a, it's a, it's it's a very general science course. Sure. Well, I love it. You know, so so as people are listening in, and and if they're not excited by now, um, maybe the. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we're sorry. Because <laughs> I'm sorry. excited, and I, I'm getting I'm getting excited even more, and, and and I already know about it, and I'm already getting more excited. So so people are listening, like, and and we're talking about these videos. We're talking about your impossible science, like like where where is this stuff? How do, how do teachers get access to it? Or parents? I mean, it, it's not just about teachers. I know, um, like, where do they go so they can start to explore this? To um, you know. Um, wet their palate with the magic and figure out how to how to weave some of this into their own teaching practices the the impossible science videos are now um, being posted up we just started posting them up on youtube uh so you can just go to youtube impossible science is the channel um just subscribe they come out every tuesday um and then there's ancillary content uh, ancillary content throughout the week um and we've provi provided them to schools and teachers and everybody that wants to use them and I'm also, my museums are helping me write lesson plans for them in various age ranges. Uh, 
but we're working as fast as we can. So the idea is that as soon as we uh, have the lesson plans, those start launching up. We're trying to work with a couple of school districts across the country. So, um, and we're trying to really launch that starting next month. So the idea is to provide them a lesson plan that's easier, more plug and play, had they want to do a deeper dive with it. Um, a lot of people are asking, is this NGSS compatible? Uh, and it is, you just, you need to be well versed in what you need to what you need to teach. And you also need to be um, how, and well versed about impossible science in general so that you can see how they connect. But I'm not teaching uh, fake science. So it's not like you're like, <laughs> wow, this is a new subject for NGSS. <laughs> no, I'm teaching, I, I'm in a spot where I'm trying to bail out the ocean as far as like, where do I start? Uh, where, what age range do I start? And so most of my videos are focused on a first grade through eighth grade um, that that student should be able to do that science experiment, um, whether they have a deep understanding or a very little understanding of science. Um, you'll get kids uh, doing the levitation experiments, even if they don't understand the science fully, you're talking like a good hour and we chewed up and these kids just playing with that experiment. <laughs> as far as like uh, most of the, in the museum, most people stay at a station for a few minutes and they move on. Where in possible science, we really register them in quarter, like 15 minute, 20 minute, inter, inter, uh, 15 to 20 minute intervals. So like some of them will be there for two sessions. So 40 minutes is chewed up in one experiment. And we have hundreds of these things <laughs> as the kids are really processing what they're, in, in, like I always joke around, in invisibility, it takes a person a, a really a solid amount of time to really process what they're not seeing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just sit there staring at nothing <laughs> and really trying to realize what's going on and it's really funny because they they walked up to the they just like in a video will be they'll watch a video on invisibility they'll know that they're capable of doing it because it's not a trick um oh it's also important to realize impossible science at home this first 20 videos is everything you could find in your house you don't need secret materials it's it's you'll just never look at a two liter bottle the same way Right, yeah. <laughs> right, and uh, I have a lot of guest celebrities that come on the show. Like we, we do like uh, uh, chemistry experiments with Brian Cranston, and, uh, and we also learn how to turn things invisible. We did center of mass and balance with the guys from Cobra Kai, Ralph Macchio and Billy Savka. <laughs> and, and so I, I, I take my friends and I, I build science experiments based on what they should be teaching because that's just funny that they're going to teach you about balance, or they're going to teach you about science experiments, and it's um, it's 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 really just a lot of fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun to realize you don't know everything. Yeah. Well, I love it. You know, I mean, I've, I've got, got the YouTube channel pulled up here and uh, Jason, I just absolutely love like the work that you're doing. And, and I know you, you've got so much coming. There's so many videos and things coming down the line. You know, I think for me, you know, for, 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 the, for the people listening, your challenge is, is twofold. I think one is to, the, the links to the PD and the resources and the show notes of, of the podcast or video, however you're viewing, you know, is to do just that. I want, I'm challenging you to take one of these videos and, and do it yourself. Be the, the student, be the person, you know, take off your, your educator hat and, and, and be that learner um, and, and just experience it as if you were in the audience, you know, um, watching magic unfold, um, you know, and, and second, the, the, the second challenge then is, you know, do one with your kids. Find a way to make it work. We're in these times where we have, um, yes, there's a lot going on, but we have the freedom um, to explore and try things out and, and, and to try those things with your students and, and see what works, see how it gravitates and, and just give yourself permission to be wowed by the wonder of, uh, of the magic that, that Jason, that you are, are creating um, and, and just do it. I think that's, that's, the, we can talk about it. It's something else altogether to experience it. And by, in this case, because a lot of us are at home, we're not, we're not able to get to museums. We're not able to, you know, have, have Jason come into our schools and all the things that are going on, at least at, at this point, you know, we still have an opportunity. And so, um, you know, it's incredible. I know there's so many people, the more that, that these things, your work gets out, are going to be so appreciative of what you're doing, um, you know, and I, I, I can't thank you enough. I've already seen the impact with my own children, just watching through some of the videos, um, you know, and I know that this stuff is going to, it, it, it's going to spread in a really positive way as more and more educators start to realize, you know, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. This guy is already making it happen. Now I get to just use my professional hat to make it work within the context of my classroom and the expectations. Absolutely. And I think that's the beauty of this is you're not trying to tell people how to teach. You're giving them a, a, a tool, a resource to 
magnify that and, and really take things to the next level of, of, of what is possible. Yeah, it's 100% about empowering people with science. And teachers, my hat's off to all of you because you guys have been doing this for years. And I don't want to be the magician that runs in the education space and be like, step aside. That's not <laughs> what I'm doing. I, I, I've just used science to build in the direction of magic and curiosity in general in my career. So like if you were going to the Impossible Science channel, you'll see the curator at work with my uh, teleporting people from a moving truck to another moving truck or uh, shaping water into an object. But this allows me to take, take a step backwards from my career and create and, and straight up just explain everything. I, I have no superpowers. I'm just a guy who asked a lot of questions. And if that step becomes accessible to the teachers and educators, I think together we're on a much, uh, ex a much, a very exciting direction for education. If if we take a step back from just handing people answers, when, which by the way, in the age of information is very hard to excite somebody because they have more answers in their fingertips than questions in their head at this moment. Right. Um, but to constantly, constantly uh, engage a person's illusion of knowledge against them. Like again, like not in a mean way. I mean, literally, slamming their 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 thought process into the edge of the the, the wall of a library um <laughs> like the, this is where all knowledge stops uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it sounds um it sounds like a very aggressive way to do it but the funniest part about it is that's what magic does this is where knowledge stops and and realizing that the kids wall of their knowledge is farther behind you it, it, it's very important to see it from their point of view so you have to show them what's on the other side of the wall, but you can't show them how to get there. You have to show them the other side first, and then the grass is always greener. I need to learn more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I need yeah. to learn more. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know you 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 hit the the nail on the head there. You know, we the, your 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 overall concept of of continuing to ask these questions that haven't been asked before, and we are living in um, a time now where we need people asking different unique questions more than ever before all right so so jason you've, you've shared so many amazing insights and things for us to consider as, as educators and, and just the idea of, of wonder and we think about inquiry and, and engagement and i think you know to, to, to come around full circle i know in your keynotes and, and, and your message and even here today you've talked about you know we have to continue to ask the questions that haven't been asked um before and you know and we can you know we'll, we'll avoid the google algorithm and you know <laughs> maybe start at the last page if there is one but i think all we have to do to realize how important that mindset is jason is to just currently look around in our current events today and all the things that are there. And I'm not saying look at them all in, in, in a negative light, but I'm looking at it in the terms of what you're sharing is, is so paramount for today because there are many, many solutions that are desperately needed in all fronts and all aspects of life. And we need not just educators, but we need our kids constantly thinking and rethinking and asking and re-asking these questions because we, as you said before, we can't continue to have people that go A plus B equals C. Uh, we need them to start coming up with these new ways because we're, we're being faced with scenarios that we've never thought of before. And, and, and so for anybody that, that's questioning that, just look around and realize how vital it is for us with the opportunities we have in education and schools to help kids have that wonder and learn how to ask those questions. And so as, as, as we bring this to a close here, Jason, I think to me, that's my big, one of my biggest takeaways. I know that this is a phenomenal opportunity. And, and we were talking a little bit before um, on the recording of, you know, you've, you've got several videos out, they're coming out every week. Um, but this is something that is, is, is big and it, it's big in a lot of ways. And so I want to just give you the final word on two fronts, any final thoughts that you want to share. And number two, just so, so educators and parents and anybody listening understands how amazing this impossible science is and is going to be in the future as things continue to build and gain momentum. Oh, thank you. I, well, I think everyone feels this illusion of knowledge brewing, but they can't put their finger on it. And I joke around, it takes a magician to spot an illusion. And uh, uh, this shoveling answers in the age of information won't work. It's not going to get somebody inspired when they can just search a question and move on. 
the problem is we've ranked those answers by popularity. That's the, that's, <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the bigger problem that I see. And so, you know, how do we get these kids skeptical and asking questions in a logical fashion? That's the essence of all science asking the progression of logical questions. So if somebody doesn't believe in science, just ask them, what question do you not agree with? Like, <laughs> like, the, like, and it really puts it back on them of why people argue that science is not something you can believe in. It's the progression of logical questions. And if you got it wrong, you ask, go back and check your questions again. That's the scientific method. In fact, we use it to take apart a magic trick in one of the Impossible Science episodes is I go through the scientific method and then show you how to apply it to the trick that just fooled you. And, and you can go and check your results by watching the video again. <laughs> like, it's just, so it's, it's really funny uh, is, to, is to formulate these things. I like, how do you make science a tool and technology and engineering and, and mathematics and, uh, and to see it happen on such a massive scale? Like, I, I, it's really important to realize, even though I'm trapped here at home and everyone's trapped at home right now, you know, uh, the infrastructure that's behind this is my museums are all working together to create the lesson plans. We have groups like the NCCE, we have uh, organizations of associate, uh, Association of Children Museums, uh, they're su help su supporting this across the country. Um, Next week, the USA Science and Engineering Festival is promoting the videos in their science festival. That's the nation's science festival. It's gone virtual and impossible science is a big component of their stage show. Um, and then on top of that, uh, my sponsors are, are Sony and Sony's really committing to this idea that curiosity and wonder is the way to see through the age of information and this illusion of knowledge that's going through. That, uh, we must teach kids how to ask questions in, in a world filled with information. Uh, because uh, it, we've gotten to a point when it's, uh, I think for a kid, I explained it the best way is it's like trigger treating. I, I know it sounds funny to word it that way, but it's like at the end of the night, you, you, you check your candy to see where, because you don't know where it came from. you right. And that's where we're at with the information age. You don't know who wrote that on the other side of that screen. And we're conditioned to think that it's on a computer. So it must be right. That, because we always say a computer smarter than us, but that's not true when we forgot that we gave the internet its answers. <laughs> like, uh, and I, I, I always say this is, had the internet been around when we collectively thought the earth was flat, you would never be able to use it to search for the true shape of earth because everyone's uploading the wrong answer. <laughs> it's true, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's when you realize, what have we done? And I'm not saying the internet is bad. I'm not saying it's, it's a, an amazing, tremendous, uh, just jaw dropping tool, but we have to remember it can't be a crutch for the next generation. It has to be a tool to, to see what's out there already. Um, but right now kids are using it like a crutch, uh, and they're not, well, they're using it as support because they don't know the answer. Um, and we've turned, I don't know, into a wrong answer. And when it's actually the foundation of all science, mm. I don't know. Let me go find out, you know? Um, and so I, I'm, uh, I, I'm really hesitant in, in the idea that I don't want to teach a kid that the internet's wrong, but I need to show them what it is. Yeah, and uh, impossible science is great at making a kid realize just because it sounded impossible to me doesn't mean I can't do it. Right. Um, right. And uh, that, that's just the exciting behind it, exciting side, uh, exciting side behind all of this is because it, it really emphasized why you need to stay curious, why is wonder so important, and it makes the impossible possible if, have we, if we find the right question. And, you, and to remember that you were born with the ability to wonder. So there's no reason you couldn't ask a question none of us have ever asked before. You just have to be convinced that there is a question out there. Yeah, I think those are uh, some, some powerful ideas to uh, wrap this conversation up. Jason, it's been phenomenal. And I think as, as you were sharing, for those that are interested, like this isn't going away. Um, there are so many videos, infrastructure, the organization, museums, having Sony behind it. So if you're interested in it, this is not something that, yeah, it sounds nice now and in three months it's going away. Um, 
I've talked to Jason. I know the, the crazy workload, the amount of videos he has, and who knows what's going to branch off from that, that the museums are developing lessons and other things. And so it's, this, this is a wonderful opportunity. If, if, if you listen to this and, and, you're, and you're, you're interested and, and you're excited about it, to try it now, um, because there, I think there, there is a, a small sliver of time where, you know, you could do these things. You can, you can get, get in contact with Jason. You can make these things work. And, and because once this thing really starts to take off, Holy cow, it's going to be great for us for resources, um, but there's also a wonderful opportunity here um, to, you know, to kind of see what works and what doesn't. And, you know, and, and, and while he's trying to help us ask those questions, those of you listening could be the ones that are asking a question that, that, that could, could take all this learning and wonder and magic to a whole new level that none of us has even considered. So. Jason, again, I appreciate you taking uh, time out of your day um, to speak with us. Those of you that are doing the PD, make sure you check out the challenges. Your challenges is to do some magic and, and have some wonder. And those listening in on, on YouTube and, and on podcast, we'd love to hear your thoughts and comments and ideas and reach out and check the show notes for all the ways to find the videos, find Jason, find all the work happening um, because you're going to want to get on, on, on this action because it's going to be really incredible. So Jason, thank you again for all your you. time.